Boeing's board is stripping CEO Dems Mullenberg uh, of his chairman title. Phil LeBeau joins us with the latest of this, I think, big decision here. Phil. I think it's a huge decision, Andrew, because for the longest time I would get questions from people where they'd say, why hasn't the board done something about either Dennis Mullenberg being chairman and CEO or other kinds of executive shakeups? Well, on Friday, the board met in a meeting that they held without Dennis Mullenberg, and they decided, you know what, you're going to split these two jobs. You're going to worry about the day-to-day -day operations. He has lost the chairman title. He remains CEO. The new non-executive chairman for Boeing is David Calhoun. Now, he's been on the Boeing board since 2009, so he's got a long tenure with the company. He also has some uh, vast experience when it comes to aviation. One time ran GE Aviation. So for Dennis Mullenberg, this sets up a fourth quarter that begins with him losing the chairman title, and he's got a lot of hurdles that the company needs to clear over the next two and a half months. First of all, they've got to return the MAX to service. They are sticking with their guidance that they expect the MAX to be returned to service, at least in some countries around the world, in the fourth quarter. They have to also maintain MAX production, which is currently at 42 per month. Reportedly, there may be some tension between Calhoun and Mullenberg over whether or not they should change that production level. And then there's a congressional hearing that Dennis Mullenberg will be at on October 30th. You can bet that not only will he be grilled by uh, senators or representatives, it's a, it's a House hearing, so it will be representatives who will be talking to him at that hearing, uh, but there's going to be a lot of questions about the oversight at Boeing. So that is going to be the most important flashpoint, if you will, and it comes just a couple of days after Boeing reports Q3 earnings. Take a look at the stock since March 13th. That was the day of the grounding. Now, you might look at this and say, well, it's generally speaking, this is a stock that's basically held where it's at since the grounding. But if you go back to the high last year, guys, it's lost about $30 billion in market cap. And that's towards the end of last year when this stock was trading well over $400 a share. So for Dennis Mullenberg, now that he's CEO only, the idea is that he concentrates on the day-to-day -day operation and getting the max back in the air and getting the production ramped up next year while David Calhoun and the board concentrate on broader business for the company overall. Hey, Phil, and I, I'm not trying to spin this one way or the other, but, but to me, my takeaway actually was that it, it, in a maybe backwards way, this was a uh, sign of confidence in Mullenberg and actually creates a new, not a honeymoon period, but probably gives him at least another 12 months to get the company back on track, which is to say, I think there was a, right. another view out there that was even more skeptical about potentially his own future at the company, and had and and that by by right. doing this, it it by default creates gives demonstrates that the board actually is confident in him still being there. I, a, I think the board has confidence in him. Based, yeah, I think I think you have a pretty good read on that. I do not get a sense, Andrew, from talking with people at Boeing that this is a case where the board is like, he is not the man to run this company, certainly not the man to get this, uh, this, uh, this plane back in the air. And I don't think they want to change the leader of the company in terms of day-to-day -day operations at such a critical juncture. Uh, now, there are some questions about whether Kevin McAllister, who runs Boeing Commercial right. Airline, uh, Airplanes, whether or not uh, he should be removed from his job or there should be some leadership shake up there. But they've already made a number of moves in the uh, in the C-suite in terms of responsibilities, right. et cetera. And I think right now the feeling is Dennis Mullenberg is the person to get us through this crisis. There, now, there was, you want to revisit that at some point down the road, right. that's a different question. There was some reporting over the weekend that suggested this decision was made in advance of a hearing that uh, Dennis Mullenberg is going to be right. speaking at in Washington and that this was an effort to effectively get ahead of that. To the extent I that there was ever going to be, I, I think that's a fair read on things. I think that's a very fair read on things. And I think that if you look at not only this move, Andrew, but look right. at the other moves that they made in terms of the safety committee, the way that they're going to have more direct reports in terms of how the uh, engineering uh, is structured at the company, they clearly are trying to make it uh, obvious, not only to regulators, but also to uh, the people in Washington, that they understand that things have to change at this company, and they're making those steps. Hey, Phil, you mentioned that there's some tension that's been reported between Calhoun and right. Mullenberg when it comes to the production schedule. Which one of them wants to slow it down more than the other? Well, the concern here is, if, from Boeing's perspective, if you slow down that production much more than 42 per month, do you get to a point where your suppliers 
are, are they going to have to start laying off people? And at a time when it's hard to find skilled labor, particularly in the global aviation supply chain, not just here in the United States, but worldwide, then the concern becomes when you ramp up, will these suppliers be able to ramp up? So that's the concern there. At the same time, they've got these planes, guys, that are piling up at different places around the country. And that creates not only an issue in terms of those planes that are built but, uh, but not delivered yet, um, then you've got to get those ramped up in terms of getting ready for delivery if and when the regulators lift the grounding. So that's the concern there. And how do you balance that? And I think that's at the heart of this question, Becky.